Hey everyone, Rob here, and it is January 2nd, 2024. Happy New Year to those who are watching this for the first time this year. Uh, I got a video that I did yesterday as well, but there's a lot of news coming in, a lot of new stuff coming out now that everyone's back to work that uh, we want to go over it regarding the situation in Iceland, situation around Grindavik, the Blue Lagoon, all of this earthquake, potential eruption, everything. So we're going to start first with this defensive barrier that is going to be built around the town of Grindavik. You can see a photo of the first phase of the plan here. Now, the Minister of Justice, Gudrun Hafsteinsdottir, she says that, that she doesn't think anything is going to stand in the way of being able to start the construction today. Um, they're getting machines, materials on site, so everything's happening. And, uh, you know, they expect it to start around noon. No information has come out uh, yet. It's just after lunchtime now. Uh, no information has come out on if they've actually started it. There's no pictures. Again, the area is you know, a little bit restricted in terms of only people of Grindavik are allowed to go there and the businesses and then select media persons. Now, Thorvald Thorson, the professor of volcanology at the University of Iceland, now he's discussed this design and the location of the defense wall uh, with a number of news agencies. And he thinks it's likely that uh, this wall perhaps will protect the town. And he says that they're building all of this and hoping that it'll, at the very least, be able to direct the lava flow from the town towards the sea. But of course, he was saying that you have to be honest when we're talking about this, building defenses based on the knowledge that's available, which is good, but there's little to no experience of how this type of defense will actually work. And, uh, you know, the defenses around the power plant in Svartsvengi, the power plant and the Blue Lagoon, that's all done. Now they're putting the effort into uh, defensive you know, barriers around Grindavik so that uh, this town is not destroyed. But around all of this, we have new information coming out from the meteorological offices here in Iceland. They said that the speed of the land rise at Svartsengi has decreased. And this is all confirmed with GPS data that uh, is going through and taking a look at in various meetings with scientists organized by the meteorological agency. And that all happened this morning. The decrease of the land rate of this going up um, is an indication that the magma pressure is building up, increasing the likelihood of a new magma flow and also an eruption. It's similar to what happened before the eruption. And they're saying that right now we're looking at basically what was going on December 15th. And then, of course, the eruption occurred three days later. It's difficult to say for them if this pattern is going to repeat itself, though. But the first sign that magma flow has begun a sudden increase in seismic activity. We haven't seen that yet, but we did see it before uh, the eruption on December 18th. So uh, recent days, seismic activity, as we've taken a look at, has been pretty stable, you know, around 150, 200 earthquakes per day. Nothing uh, too intense. Everything's around one or magnitude of one or below. Um, and we're expecting if this is slowing down, this land rise, that perhaps the seismic activity will pick up. It is still the opinion of scientists that if there is an eruption, it's most likely that it will erupt again on Suntunuk's crater series between Stora, Skogfet, and Hagafet. And again, we're looking at this uh, Hagafet down here and Stora, Skogfet right here. So it's sort of right in the middle of this area, which is why these, these two areas are red, because they're expecting it to happen here. And we see, of course, the previous eruption um, lasted only a few days, but you can see the amount of lava that came out over just a couple of days to go from this area all the way down. And if we have a similar thing, we're basically hitting Grindavik. So this is the risk assessment map that was issued on December 29th. It's remaining unchanged and is valid until January 5th. Uh, as long as no big events happen, like an eruption or some, you know, major earthquakes. Um, yeah, so this this is just same old, same old, but the land rise is slowing down. And three days after the land rise slowed down previously, we had an eruption. So there may be, uh, if that's the pattern that we're going to see, we should be seeing an eruption within the next three days or so. And, uh, you know, all of this is coming into January. We have uh, 
Thorvald Thorvaldson again. He's expecting that something's going to happen, and not doesn't know exactly when. I mean, he's he's not one to give exact date based on uh, all of these news. But in an interview with Morgan Blath, you know, he also acknowledged that um, you know the land rise is slowing down a little bit, and he says that uh, you know previously when it was maintaining a constant speed, he said it's unlikely anything's going to happen until the land rise slows down, and now that it is. He believes that uh, if magma reaches the surface as a result of this, uh, it'll appear in the same places as it was on December 18th. He also believes that uh, if it does erupt, it could be a relatively small eruption, powerful bit at the beginning, as well as maybe at the end. But if it's less powerful than the last eruption, he thinks it could last longer than just a couple days that we saw in the last one. And then we have the other uh, professor of volcanology at the University of Iceland, Armin Hörsson, and he says that this area, Svartsengi, has reached a critical point. And there's just the matter of waiting now to see what's going to happen next. Uh, he referencing, of course, the Icelandic Meteorological Agency's announcement, which came out, talking about the, the speed slowing down. And he says it is only the area of Svartsengi that has reached this critical point uh, but not the other ones. So they're just sort of on standby, taking a look at the situation. He thinks, with regards to if an eruption is going to happen, it's impossible to say. He says it depends on how much pressure is reached inside of these uh, sort of chambers uh, that all of this magma is kind of going into. He says it believes, again, it's most likely to erupt in the same areas, so the same as Thorvaldus. And since the eruption occurred in this place last time, he believes it's very likely that it will be the same the same way it's the easiest way up uh, and he's, he thinks it's unlikely to come up anywhere else so we will we will see he also thinks that it could be a powerful eruption at the beginning that will last for a short time and uh, he does think that eruptions in this area will kind of be on and off for now and uh, yeah something that we're just going to have to deal with moving forward so that's the news for today again the risk assessment map still stands Grindavik is still increased level of danger although not a different color code just specifically talking about um, sort of the aspects within the the, uh, the zone of you know zone four of Grindavik being more dangerous due to the risk of you know emissions from an eruption or the eruption or increased seismic activity that is likely to come due to now the land slowing down and the pressure now building up. It needs to go somewhere. So if you're in that area, be very careful. If you're in that area, hopefully you're allowed to be there. And uh, of course, the Blue Lagoon remains closed. So if you have bookings to that, uh, be sure to reach out if they haven't contacted you already about rebooking or getting a refund. However, they're, they're making it work. But again, zone two and three, we can see how little it actually needs for the lava to basically hit Grindavik should it come up. So I'm sure that there's going to be big news in the next maybe hours to, to days. So be sure to subscribe and uh, put in some comments if I missed anything because there's a lot of information and a lot of data to go through. And uh, yeah, I just sometimes I just miss stuff. So thanks so much for watching. Hope the new year has started off great. And until next time, thanks again.